Okay, we're in Galatians chapter 5, day number 24 of the grid readings. And this is the Apostle Paul again, and he's writing to the church in Galatia. He says, so Christ has truly set us free. And so now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. And Paul then talks a little bit about, you know, if you're counting on circumcision to make you right with God, then Christ will be of no benefit to you. He's kind of reminding them of the gospel, right? Truth number one in foundations, that we start a relationship with God by trusting in Jesus, not by counting on some religious thing to make us right with God. And so he says here in verse 6, For when we place our faith in Christ, there's no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is important is faith expressing itself in love. So again, notice he's pivoting here. He's he's talking to um, you know the circumcised believers, the Jewish people, and the uncircumcised believers, the Gentile pe- people, which he said, you don't have to get circumcised to be accepted by God. He said the most important thing, and look at this, and this relates to yesterday's reading, James 2, what is important is faith expressing itself in love. You notice he doesn't just say what is important is faith, but he's talking about the outpouring of faith, the working out of faith, which is love. He says it a little bit differently here in verse 13, for you've been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your nature. Don't be me first. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. And then he says in verse 14, and this sort of echoes Matthew 22, the second part of it from Jesus. He says, for the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. As you read this chapter, just notice how much he talks about love and think of love as the outpouring of a life that is truly changed by the grid of Jesus. And the, you know, it's the expression of a life that starts off in faith. Okay. And so here's the key verse for the day. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives and then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Okay. And then he goes on. And if you've never read this before, this is such a great passage where he talks about two different opposite ends of the spectrum, the sinful nature and the sinful nature's desires and works. And you can read that there in those verses, starting at verse 19. Things like immorality and impurity and and idolatry and hostility and quarreling and all these things. But then in verse 22, he talks about the other side of the spectrum, what the Holy Spirit produces in our lives. And remember, Ephesians 1.13 says that if you've put your faith in Christ, if you've had your defining moment, if you've been born again, then you have the Holy Spirit in your life. And the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. It's not just you who produces it. It's the Holy Spirit who produces it. And look at the first thing on the list, love. And remember, it's all about love, right? Love God, love others as yourself. So love is naturally the first fruit that is produced by the Holy Spirit in our lives. And then also joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against these things. And so Paul is just arguing for what we just saw in James chapter 2, that that this should really be, this fruit should really be a part of what happens now in our lives. People should be able to tell if we've become Christians, if we belong to Christ. It should be obvious uh, in our lives and in our lifestyle. So you're ready to read Galatians chapter 5, and we'll see you tomorrow for a little bit more of this in the book of Romans.